Blast Tube. This is Kate from Kate's Crafting Corner. It is September 21st and I am here with another update. Um, my mom was here um, not last week. We took her back last Monday but the week before that so that's why it's been so long since I updated. Um, but it is now just me and my husband and our dogs up here and Gracie is right here. Come here baby. Come here. She's like right under my feet looking up at me. Come here. Come here. Grace, come here. Come here, city girl. Oh, there she is. I think she misses my mom who gave her tons of cuddles. Yes, she did. What? What? <laughs> I don't actually have a T-R-E-A-T -E up here for them this time. Because I did not think they would be here. Um, they they like to be downstairs because it's still kind of hot. Um, so they go and hide under my husband's desk where it's the darkest and the coldest. I might have a really cute picture of them both under there. And if so, I'll insert it. But um, Oh, you went down? Gracie's been needy a little bit lately. Um... I think with having my sister's dogs here when my mom was here, she just got a little bit needy. And so she really wants to be held and cuddled a lot, and that's fine, because she's just a little girl. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I love you. Um, so I'm going to put you down now so I can continue this. Oh, look, it's brother. Go get him. Yep, there they go. <laughs> and so... um. Yeah, I think she got a little overwhelmed with the number of dogs and everything, so she's just being a little bit needy, and that is fine. Um, so I actually have a list of things to talk about this time, so I'm not as all over the place. So uh, without further ado, I will get started on that. I do have a video to insert um, in a little bit because I did make my sister Alex the Scooby-Doo cross stitch and turn it into a pillow and I made her a bag but those are with my mom so I made a little video um, last week before my mom left and I will insert that but um, first let me start with my cross stitch whips a lot of my time did go into the bag and pillow so I don't have very much progress on things. But um, on Saturday, I spent most of Saturday working on um, September Cottage from Country Cottage Needleworks. And here is where I am at. Before I had most of the building done, none of the roof. So I did the roof, the words, this is starting like the leaves on the tree, the birds, the baskets, and the grass. Um, I was watching things while doing this. So even though I spent most of the day, I did not get a ton accomplished. About five to six hundred stitches. Because I was just distracted with what I was watching. Um, so. I also worked on... Um, one of the challenges I was doing, hi George, do you want to come say hi now? He is perched up here. Come say hi. Say hi, Georgie. Say hi, I'm a little Georgie boy. I love you. I love you. Yes, I do. I love you. This, he has turned into quite a snuggler. Like he used to not like to be snuggled while sleeping and now he just wants to snuggle right up into you. So. This is my little snuggy boy, and I love you. Yes, I do. Okay, mommy's gonna put you down now. Okay, thank you. Um. Okay, one of the challenges said to work on something you haven't worked on in years, and I have literally not worked on, um. Esther's Waves from Northern Expression in probably two or three years. I will, I'm doing a color conversion. Um, so I will insert 
a picture of the computer generated um, color conversion and then I did find someone on the group who has completed it but they are using silks and I'm just using DMC so I'll also insert that um, here but I did um, get in some stitching on this and I completed all of those snowflakes I think they're snowflakes in my mind they're snowflakes I do still have to add ray stitches um, in each of these corners right here. There's a ray stitch. So I need to go through and do that still. But I am super happy to have made some progress on this. Um, I'm not loving my fabric. I am thinking it's that fabric that we all complained about that is um, taller than it is wide I believe is the problem with it but anyways I'm gonna persevere because one I don't want to do this whole band of Jessica stitches again each block is separated by a Jessica stitch band so I have a lot of those in my future so I don't want to have to do it again so I'm just gonna go with it um, there's a lot of beads in here and I haven't ordered them yet, but to give you a kind of idea of the color palette, these are the DMC colors and I just think that's gorgeous. So I need to work on this more. I have some very small progress on so many books, so little time. Um, I decided to do this. This is sounding familiar. Like I already told you guys this, maybe in the last video, but I don't remember, so I'm just going to say it again. I'm changing from doing cross country to doing diagonal block by block. Um, the reason for this is just this is 28 count fabric easy grid and it is just it's still too difficult for me to um, see all the holes and everything when I'm going cross country a lot of those little empty stitches just kind of disappear like this is basically zoomed up from what I can see so I can see them clearly now but when I'm holding them like this, I can't really see it. And so um, it's just gonna be easier to do that block by block. Um, I would like to figure out how I can do a kind of stitch with me, but um, I do parking, I believe, in a different way than most people because all of the tutorials I've seen don't do it quite like I do. And so I want to do a kind of stitch with me, my parking method tutorial situation. So I need to figure out how to do that. But basically what I do is, okay, um, so take all these colors in this block. Most people, when they do parking, they will start with like this one because it's in the top row. I do it the opposite way. I start with the one that's the lowest down so I can move these parked threads out of my way and I don't have to deal with them hanging about as much. And then I work my way up like that. Um, with the parked threads. So I would do all that one, then park it down here. Then I would go to the next one that's highest up and do that and then park it. And I just find for me, that's the easiest way to deal with parking. Um, so yeah, I would like to show that in a video. My sister sent me a voicemail <laughs> the other day, um, a couple days ago. And she was so excited because she discovered the loop method. There they go. Anyways, 
I guess she was watching some cross stitch video on YouTube, which is surprising to me, but um, cool. And so she was very excited to explain the loop start method to me just in case I hadn't heard about it but she was sure I had because I know the cross stitch thing anyways it was so funny but um <clears throat> she didn't realize that you could start it on top you didn't have to start it on the bottom so I made a little video to explain that to her and maybe I'll insert it here because it's kind of fun to like make a little video and if you don't know about the loop start method or that you can start it on top I mean um, you don't, I mean, you don't always know about these things. I, I had to fig find it out somehow. Someone said it and then explained it. So maybe I'll insert a little bit. Okay. I'm going to try to do this, but it's at a really weird angle for me. Okay. So you go and you put in your, oops, your needle in the hole that you would normally be coming up with. So then you pull till there's just a little bit left. Then you come up in the hole that you would be going down. Pull and I like to immediately put it through the loop. And then you put it back down into the hole that you would have been going up and it will bring that loop down back to the back and so you never even have to flip over your work or look for the loop um, and then you can just keep cross stitching this is like a mile away from me this is so hard but anyways so yeah that's how you can do the loop start without ever having to turn it over you can just do it from the top of your fabric so if you have any questions let me know love you bye but of what i recorded for her but um yeah that was fun to do so i would like to do showing my parking method but i had to, i was balancing my phone in a very awkward manner and so I need to figure out some better way to be able to do it and record it and show it so we'll see if I can get that figured out and then maybe I'll be able to show you guys my parking method not on this because that those holes are way too small to be able to show um, parking I, I would need to be doing it on one of my 18 count full coverages so not this one anyways so the final cross stitch I have to show, again this is a feeling a little bit like I already told you guys this, but I don't know. I don't remember if it was in the last one, maybe I should have watched that video first. But um, I worked on my US President's cross stitch. And I got all of the black and um, I think there's none of that gray on the third president done. So now it's just kind of filling in, um, which doesn't take much time at all for those three presidents. I like being able to, with the first four, I did one at a time. With these ones, I did all three of them. Um... And I really liked being able to do that because that's what fits in my Q snap. But then also, like, if I'm pulling basically the same colors, it just makes it easy. So my goal for this month, and I'm hoping to be able to achieve it, is to finish those three presidents and then the border around them. So I'm hoping I can do it, but we will see. Um, so... That is the U.S. Presidents from Clouds Factory. Um, and that concludes the cross stitch section. I'm just going to cross that off now. Um, and here is where I will insert the clip of the Scooby-Doo because I spent a week 
cross-stitching Scooby-Doo, so that's where a lot of my cross-stitch time went. I do want to cross-stitch it again for myself. I'm thinking of maybe, when I do it for myself, sewing it and including it on a project bag. Probably knitting. I don't know. Maybe cross-stitch project bag. I don't know. But doing something like that. I have a few Clouds Factories, and so... I think that that would be a cool way to be able to display them and um because I clearly don't hang most of my things and I can only turn so many of them into pillows so that's just something I was thinking about doing so here is the clip of Alex's things hey I'm gonna be inserting this clip which I will have already told you um, into my update but um, it is Monday at 11 o'clock a.m. and we are about to take my mom back to Fresno. However, my craft room is still set up with all of her stuff and the mattress, blow up mattress that she's been using. Um, so I can't film in there, but I wanted to show you before she takes these two things with her that I have two FOs that I completed in this week and um or ffos actually because they are fully finished and they're both gifts for my sister alex who just had her 19th birthday so um she wanted scooby-doo things so i made her this pillow i cross-stitched it all this week we thought this purple fabric would be nice and then this this fabric's kind of fun, so put it in there. So I think that turned out really cute, and I think she's really going to like it. The second thing that I finished was a Scooby-Doo knitting bag for her, and I am so kind of impressed with myself, you guys. This is the first time I have did several things. Um, I put something in here to stabilize this more than the other bag I made. It might be a little too stiff, so I need to find the lighter weight um, interfacing or whatever it is. And then I thought these two fabrics went so well with the purple of Daphne's shirt. Um, I followed a different pattern than than the one I made for myself, and this one turned out much better, much more professional looking. This is the inside fabric. There's so there's no seams showing. Um so yeah, this is just how this turned out and I think it turned out so well. I'm so happy. Um I wish I had enough of this fabric so I could make myself a duplicate. I do have enough of this one and enough of this one, but I don't have any more of this. Um so maybe I will look at Joanne's and see if they have more so I can make myself a duplicate but um you guys seriously do not cut fabric when you are tired at night because I cut this piece a three or four times because I couldn't wrap my round, mind around what direction the characters needed to be facing so I had each of the times I cut it this way and I also cut the fusible fleece like two or three times because I kept thinking I needed two pieces of 12 by 12, but no, you need one piece of 12 by 12.5 by 24.5 or something like that. Anyways, I followed Erica Arndt's um, squishy bag tutorial and I will link that below. But I wanted to show you guys before um, I had to send this with my mom. I'm so impressed with it. Um, so yeah, that is all. And I will send you guys back to the rest of the regular updates. Sorry, my hair is wet and the background's a mess, but you know, you have to squeeze in these moments when you can. So talk to you guys later. Bye. And crossing that off my list. Okay. So now we will get into the crochet and knitting portion of this section. Um, I'm kind of feeling like something isn't here, but I don't know what. So I do have 
three very tiny finishes. The first is this dishcloth. Um, I, I knit this in the car to and from Fresno, dropping my mom off. So I'm really happy with this and um, it was fun to do, easy to do. My husband doesn't want to use the homemade dishcloth and I don't really understand his hang up about it. Um, so I'm probably gonna try to slowly incorporate them into the kitchen and um, I wanna have like a large enough pile so that I can change them daily or every other day and be able to just toss these in the wash. So, um, that is my <laughs> kind of plan for that. But, um, I'm also probably going to gift a couple or a few for Christmas. So I need to make some more. With that said, I do have one that is about halfway done. And that's in a different colorway. So these are knit diagonal. So you increase in size and then you decrease in size. I use chow goo red lace because I I prefer these needles these are my favorite needles the cord is my favorite because there's no memory in it and and then I just really love the chow goo needles themselves it is surgical steel I believe I get these off Amazon and so if you're looking for good knitting needles I highly highly recommend these and actually, I had something funny kind of happen. So, um, I, I ordered that Advent yarn for, um, Christmas socks. So that, in theory, you knit one color stripe a day. Which actually is a story in itself because I wound my yarn, like, two days ago. And I noticed, as I was winding it, there's way more than 24 color stripes, right? And so I decided to rewind it. And this is just a 50 gram skein, so enough for one sock. And so I decided to rewind it while counting the colors. And there was 61 color changes. So I wrote the, um... Hey, that's enough. No. No. Um, stop. So I re, so I wrote the yarn dyer and I was like, um, I don't really understand. There's 61 color changes. I thought this was a 24 stripe advent. And so she responds and I kind of felt her at it. No, her attitude was a little bit snooty and she was like, well, not everyone's foot size is the same and the 24 stripes isn't enough for everyone and um and so uh, there's 2.5 repeats of the colors and there was nothing about this on the description of the um of the item on the Etsy shop both of you stop you stop and there was nothing included in the description on the, um, like in the package itself, there was nothing. And so it's kind of like, as a wide footed girl, I appreciate there being some more. <laughs> I appreciate there being more yarn so that you could knit for wider feet or longer feet or whatever however I feel like there should have been something like that included with the product and also because if you think that you're gonna knit yourself a pair of socks just doing one color stripe a day and you're gonna be done then by Christmas you're gonna be in for a rude awakening and I feel like as a consumer I sh she should have made you aware of that and also I don't feel like really the average foot would use just one third of a skein of yarn for their sock. So I feel like even for the average person, you would be needing to do more than one color stripe a day. So 
Um, so I'm kind of frustrated with that because, you know, I spent more than a normal skein of yarn for this and I would have just bought from someone else, honestly, probably. And I just felt like there should have been more communication about this fact on the listing for the product as well as maybe something in there with the product itself. Um, so that's just kind of my two cents on that and I'm kind of frustrated about the situation. But to go with that and my funny story. So I needed a um, another 40 inch ca uh, cable for Magic Loop two at a time socks to be able to do those for Advent. And so I ordered one off Amazon. But what came was actually of the child goose was a three pack and it was definitely only supposed to be the one because um the price of it and everything so i thought that was just really kind of funny i like now i'm not low i did actually um this is what this is what i'm talking about so there was three of these in there I did give one to my mom um, so that she could learn and I also gave her a skein of yarn because when she makes it back to Singapore she's gonna have to do a um, two-week quarantine not even at home like she has to be quarantined in their quarantine area it might be a hotel or something like that but so she can't go home, she can't see my dad, she can't get any of her stuff. So she asked me if she could have a skein of my yarn and she's thinking of learning how to knit a pair of socks. My mom does knit, but socks scare her. And then also I gave her some washcloth yarn and a pair of, um, I had bamboo needles, um, and the sides needed for the washcloth so I gave her those because I don't I discovered I really don't like the bamboo needles the I just struggled too much with moving the yarn and she read somewhere that bamboo needles are actually really good if you have arthritis and my mom has really bad arthritis in her hands so um so yeah so I gave her those and some uh, cotton yarn for dishcloths and so um, Hopefully she will be set for that. But anyways, yeah, so that was my Advent Yarn sock story. What I am thinking about doing is in our family, we do celebrate um, like Twelfth Night, so the 12 days of Christmas, which everyone always wants to do it in the lead up to Christmas, but no, Christmas is the first day of Christmas and the 12th day is actually in January. So. The 26th is second day of Christmas, third, fourth, fifth, like that. So what I'm thinking is there are actually only four days in November after Thanksgiving um, before the start of December. So I am thinking that I will start those Advent socks and still do one stripe a day. And I will start those in like Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. And then I will continue through Twelfth Night. And that should actually give me a wide enough sock or long enough, I'm thinking. Because I added, I have a note over here that I like my leg to be 60 rounds and my foot to be 70. I am actually thinking about changing that to 55 and 65. Um, but anyways, so... That should be enough days to get me through and Twelfth Night be the end of it. So that's what I'm thinking about doing. And then I do also have two advent calendars. One is a 24 day and the other one is a 12 day. So I'm thinking about doing the 24 day during December and then starting the 12th day on Christmas. And so, because I'm still thinking about doing Vlogmas, 
I might actually have an extended Vlogmas if I keep it up because, you know, like I was doing daily vlogs with Mania and that didn't happen, but I'm still hoping. I'm really excited about the idea of a Vlogmas, so that's kind of my idea with that and that is way off track. So the next two small finishes I actually got last night and these are two little Hexi Puffs and these took me hours to make each one. I am really struggling with these. I think that they're cute and they definitely showcase the yarns that I'm using. Um, but, so these are from an advent last year, Nocturne Alley. So um, these, are two, these are days two and three. And I needed to make my little hexi puffs as memories from that so I could use the rest of the yarn in a blanket that I'm making with that, um, with that advent calendar. Um, it's called the habitation throw. So I have all of day one. So, um, this is the habitation throw, but so I needed to make the hexi puffs before I just I'd magic knot the yarns together and then I just knit until I'm all the way out of it. So I did days two and three so I could work on this probably as my knitting for today. Um, but, um, yeah, each of these took me two to three hours because I'm really struggling with DPNs. There is super bad laddering. Um, maybe it's not showing up in the camera as much. Yeah, up the sides. I can't figure out how to ho properly hold the needles in my hands without them getting in the way. So I am struggling with DPNs, but I'm persevering nonetheless because I think that these are just so cute. I'm not sure how I feel about them being sewn together into a blanket. Don't know what else I would use them for though, so. Um, I now have four, four completed hexi puffs. So, I did work a little bit on this virus afghan. I had another color change. And so, we are down to um, only one strand of pink and three of the purple. So, need to work more on this, but it is coming along. It might end up being a birthday present instead of a Christmas present because I might need that extra time. I did work a little bit on my dad's socks from where the needle is. This is a roundabout where I was going to start the heel. However, my mom did say that my dad would probably prefer if they were a bit longer. And she rated my yarn stash again. And so she was going to have socks that are in the reverse of my dad's. That was her plan, idea, whatever. Then she discovered this yarn, which was in there the whole time when I let her have free reign to pick the color in the first case. But she... <laughs> She came to me on one of her last days and she was like, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I would like this instead. And I was like, yeah, this seems a lot more like you than when you chose green. <laughs> Cause my mom is a blue, like blue's always what she picks. Anyways, so this is called Storm Clouds. And I don't know if she realized that that was its name, but actually we, had a cat when we when I was little named Stormcloud. So, because uh, being the creative children that we were, we got him on a stormy day. <laughs> so we named him Stormcloud. Go away. So, um, yeah. So this is what she changed her mind to, and so um, we then. Oops decided that this is a better sock pattern for that yarn. Um, the Sweetheart Socks by Kay Lydon. This is um, the Crazy Sock Lady. 
Um, the one she had initially chosen, I think would be better with a less, um, with a more monochromatic yarn because there's so much like gaps, um, lacy parts that I think would just be lost with such a variegated yarn. But anyway, so once I finish my dad's, these are for my mom. And so I am excited about that. Which brings me to one last um, sorry, crossing off from my list. One last project to talk about. And that is every year this knitting designer named Stephen West does a mystery knit along in the month of October. I participated last year and only did one small part because uh, I got a little overwhelmed with I just wasn't I I would I don't know if I want to start over per se or just figure out how I can continue it but it was a little bit beyond my skill level but it's been a year and I've improved as a knitter and so I've decided to give this a try again and I did, and the only reason I'm doing it is because I was able to pull from Stash um, all the yarns I needed. So look at this super cute bag. I got it at Hobby Lobby like, I don't know, a year or two ago. I think it's so cute with the llamas. And um, so it starts on October 9th. However, I did do a swatch knit for it. My original choices were these these three. However, I decided, um, okay, I was always going to do this color, the darker one. It was just trying to decide what the other ones are, and actually the lighting is so blowing this out. But anyways, I decided that this one was way too modeled. This splotch over here makes it look like the yarn bled into it and I just didn't like that. So I did manage to find a different one, this blue one, in my stash. So these are the colors I will be using and I'm so excited. I think that those are going to be so beautiful together. And here they are. Um, these are all from Bluebird Yarn on Etsy. She and her daughter Story Weaver are my two favorite. So the main color is called Evergreen. And I have two skeins of that. You need two skeins of this one. And this was one of the only yarns that I had two skeins of. So I knew that I needed this to be my main color. Then I... Um, it came as part of a three color set, um, the other colors up over there. Uh, anyway, so this is the second color and it does have some modeling that didn't show up a lot in this, but I think it'll be fine. The third color in that set was this one that I decided was just too modeled. It will make a nice pair of socks or something, but not for this design. So when I first thought about those colors, I knew I needed another one. So I found this light pink that I thought was pretty neutral and would fit in with them. Also from Bluebird Yarns, this was... Um, afternoon tea at Tissane's, if that's how you pronounce it. It was part of her English Village Tea Shop of the Month Club. I only participated for two months because it was one that you have to go back every month and resubscribe and I just forget to do that and then you know I, I stopped working and COVID so I only participated for two months but I thought that this is perfect as that other color. And then, when I realized I needed to find another color, I found this blue one. And this is actually the second color 
from the Anne of Green Gables advent. Um, it was a four week advent where it was full size skeins. And I have the other three in a different knitting project. So I had this one just by itself. And I decided that this was the perfect combination um, for to be with these three with this as the main color. And um, so it's called Slip Stitch Stravaganza. I will try to remember to put a link um, to the pattern in the Ravelry shop. It's again by Stephen West. And um, yeah, so I knit this swatch. I did block it and oh my gosh, I never realized how much the fabric actually changes after blocking. It lays so much nicer and drapes so beautifully. So yeah, I'm super excited about that and I cannot wait to be able to cast on. Um, I will be using, I, I would have had to have ordered another set of child goo needles off Amazon and because I am trying to be frugal um, I decided to just give these knit picks that I bought a while ago a try I just um, I mean it's a different kind of cord there's some memory still in it but as I was knitting the swatch it wasn't actually that bad so um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with it and the yarn doesn't slide as nicely on these wooden needles as they do on the chow goo, but I, it'll be fine. So this is Knit Picks. Um, they, the pattern calls for US 4. And it does call for a 40 inch uh, cable or whatever. And this is 47, so it is I am using bigger than what the pattern calls for, but I do like being able to have more space on my cables. I know a lot of knitters like to um, have theirs all bunched up, but I'm the opposite. I prefer there to be more space. So those are my things for the slip stitch extravaganza, and I am so excited to start it. And these yarns, all five of them, just fit perfectly in this bag. So I am so, so happy with all of my choices regarding this, that I could do it from stash because I honestly, I didn't, I thought I was going to have to give this sal a pass because I just can't order a kit of five fingering weight yarns. It's like $130 or something like that. But here they are, all fit snugly in the bag. So I am really excited to do this. Um, there is one other knitting related event. Um, and it's called the Pigskin Party from Boston Jen. I think that's the name of it. I know it's Pigskin something. But anyway, so this is supposed to correspond with the American football season. I do not watch football. It, I, it's just not a sport I understand or can appreciate. It's not my thing. However, you don't need to watch that to participate in this event. So if you are a knitter, I would recommend, because you can still sign up and be put onto teams. I am on team number four. Um... Team, sorry, team number 14, and there are way more than that. The, she had to create three different conferences, so I'm in the Alpaca Conference. That's the third one. And, um, yeah, so far, my teammates seem fantastic. I think we're calling ourselves Schrodinger's Yarn or something. Um, quite a few of the women in my group are into the sciences. That's not my thing. I thought um, there were a couple that were more fun in my opinion, but you know, um, I'm just one member <laughs> and you know, they created a logo that was actually really cute. And so, um, so yeah, so I'm pretty excited about that. 
and they seem fantastic women so I'm excited to get to know them better but so it starts on September 25th which is Friday and every finish that you do then counts for so many points and so you enter them and the points go for your team and and there are um, I mean there's prizes and stuff I believe and there's sponsors and so if you knit a pattern by a sponsor or use a yarn by a sponsor you get extra points and so um, things like dish claws are just a small number of points but um, but it's still some points so I have some dish but you have to have started it I believe during the event I think for things like blankets if you're making individual squares then those can count separately so I think each of my hexi puffs can count as points um, I don't remember if yardage is taken into account I need to read the rules again write them out write little reminders for myself but this goes through February and I am by nature a competitive type of person and I need that competitiveness to encourage me um, so I'm really looking forward to this you guys are probably gonna see a lot more knitting I don't know if crochet is allowed I hope it is so I need to read the rules again obviously for that to find out what kind of projects I can do but um, I do know for example to go with the sponsor thing that Nitty Natty, who I don't know if I mentioned her, but she's one of the like three yarn podcasters I watch and love. And she's one of the sponsors. And um, she has a yarn cozy pattern that requires 14 grams. I know because I wrote it on my blackboard. <laughs> I have uh, all the things that I make with scraps or like the number of rows with my foot so that I can quickly glance over there and see that information and since the blackboard is no longer behind me I can put more things like that on there um I mean it's even got my body measurements so that's why I want to put that probably behind you even though I told you guys my body measurements one time <laughs> but anyways so she's a sponsor so I and I wanted to make a yarn cozy for each of these because I'm um, I want to keep my yarn better contained during the project so starting the 25th I'm gonna make like four yarn cozies using some mini skeins that I have in stash and so um, each of those will be able to count for some points so I mean it's think but it also count for some extra points because Nitty Natty is a sponsor so I'm really excited about that and I'm hoping you guys might maybe be interested in joining if you do can you say that I referenced you you'll need to reference my Ravelry username but then I get points for that too so if you join which you totally should could you reference me <laughs> thank you um but yeah so I'm super excited about that in case you guys couldn't tell um so that was that I already talked about mom socks there they go again um then I only have a few little life updates um so the first is kind of I went to the doctors like two weeks ago a week or two ago two weeks ago because my mom was still here and um, I mean it's not like bad bad news or anything I got test results from blood work back and since I've been back on my medication my numbers are almost all of them now in normal range um, I was I had some really bad numbers before um, so but now most of them are in range however he said that I did I do need to start exercising more regularly um, at least five times a week for 30 minutes at least um, otherwise I'm probably gonna have to go on more medication and I do not want to go on more medication so I have started doing Leslie Sanson's walk from home um, there are videos on YouTube and I am really enjoying those my mom and I did them while she was here and now I'm doing them by myself. I um, 
skip this weekend because I'm probably going to skip the weekends and probably do Monday through Friday. But um, I did one before making this video. And so if anyone wants to join me and like do accountability type of stuff, I would really recommend it. She also has a um, program you could sign up for where you'll be able to get access to like all the videos, but it will also create like because YouTube only has a very limited amount of them and, and these are not uh, like streamed knocked off ones they're on her actual web on her actual uh, YouTube page so um but she's got a website and an app that has like all of them but it will also create a schedule for you so that you're doing different ones and stuff like that and that's like five dollars a month so I've been thinking about um, there is a week trial so I've been thinking about signing up to do that because I really need to make this a big priority in my life because I do not want to go on more medication than I'm already on um, so that's just kind of my exercise type of update the other thing is when my mom is here I was talking to her about planners and you guys know I love to plan and I love to then not follow my plans but I have been really thinking that I'm gonna get back into bullet journaling um I just have not been utilizing my happy planner I do love the stickers but then I get overwhelmed with them I was also spending way too much money on buying weekly sticker sets which I loved because then I didn't have to think about where to put different stickers but I was looking through my bullet journal and this is from 2018 and I was just missing all these things I used to do this layout I created for a week the weekly goals I would put um, the being able to have things like collections or hang on I think I just saw one my monthly setup so this was for arbitrary August in 2018 where I had those goals and each week I assigned a color and these were things I wanted to work on for at least 10 hours a month and I would assign each week a color and I would fill in and I just miss doing things like that and there wasn't really space to do this in well I mean probably I could have figured it out a little bit more in the happy planner but in the leafy treetops planner where you can't even insert pages there wasn't really a way and I missed having things like um, you know my my uh, random collections just spread out randomly in the journal like here's my FIFA World Cup <laughs> uh, random one where I made like a different like a spread for each group during the and I would keep track of the scores and enter them and I put what my guess the rankings would be and what they actually ended up being and I just had so much fun with that and um, I mean the reason I stopped doing it is because it did end up taking me like um, I mean, I would have whole weeks where I drew it out but then never used it so I guess September is when I stopped using my bullet journal I drawn out all the weeklies and then I just didn't use them and that's when I I'm pretty sure September is around when I switched to the happy planner and that was good for the time that I used it I did really enjoy it I enjoyed not having to draw weekly layouts but now I'm not working I have some more time and I do miss this so I bought this two or three years ago um it's not the Legstrom which this one is and I know I butchered that pronunciation and I might order another one for the new year but maybe not but I got this super cheap at Target one year um, and so the reason I'm thinking about ordering another like is the the pages are wider for that one and um, 
so I might, but I might not. I mean, I might give this a shot. But I do, in this one, have a whole section um, between these two ribbons that are completely blank. And this one is where I started some random collections. Like, does anyone remember Stitch What's? I was in Satindor, which was essentially Gryffindor, which is <laughs> the worst sorting I've ever been given. Because I am not a Satindor. Uh, or a Gryffindor. Um, I'm, I'm a Slytherin. I'm not a Gryffindor. Even my mom, who doesn't always agree that I'm a Slytherin, will agree I'm not a Gryffindor. Um, but... So I'm thinking about putting random collections there in that section. So that'll give me a few pages and just using this for the rest of the year. I thought about starting from here, but why waste the pages in here? So um, over this next week, I am going to start setting this up for the next three months, do the future logs and um, just doing that sort of thing so I can get back into bullet journaling and then over the next three months I will begin setting this up with the various spreads that like the future log for a whole year and I like to have the future log but then behind it I like to have a bill section so I can just quickly flip to the bill section and see what's coming up but that's not messing up or in the way of the things that I have uh, just for events or doctor's visits and stuff like that. So doing some of that, putting some of the collections into here. And so I am, I'm looking forward to getting back to the bullet journal. So yeah, that's just that kind of update. I do still have a ton of stickers and I've seen people put stickers in the bullet journals. So I'm definitely going to consider still doing things like that. Um, I, however, back in the spring, I did pre-order a Tudor era type of planner. So what I'm thinking is having this be more of like my life cross stitch crafts that type of stuff um and having the other one be more of a family planner type of situation my husband's doctor's appointments my doctor's appointments uh his work stuff things like that and just having this be more just for me and so um that is my thoughts with that. I am still really looking forward to getting my tutor planner and I will be doing a flip through of that. Um, one final update is that I've mentioned in the past that I am now the co-host, like host of the 24 hour readathon, um, Dewey's 24 hour readathon. It was started in 2007. Um, my friend Gabby and I took over um, as the official like host of the whole thing um, we took over at the end of the April one so October will be the first official big one that Gabby and I host it's October 24th I would love for you guys to join us I will be posting the signups on the website on Friday um so I I will be spending a lot of time working on that for the next month I spent about six to eight hours on Sunday working on that doing some major updates for the website um, emailing volunteers signing people up for volunteering that type of thing and I am going to need to spend some time on that probably daily um, for the next month so that is going to be taking a lot of my time it also means stealing my computer back from my husband which is difficult um, but yeah so um, that's a big major thing happening I will leave the website for the 24 hour readathon down below if you wouldn't to join in, I would love that so much. Um, you don't have to read for the full 24 hours. Any reading counts. 
there will be mini challenges, there will be um, Twitter parties, there's going to be a few reading challenges, we're going to have a bingo board, um, just things like that. And yeah, so it's super fun. And um, I have been doing it since I believe 2009. So over 10 years. And I, in the past, I participated as a co-host. So I was in charge of a block of like three hours. And then I also um, did the Goodreads group and the Facebook group. But now uh, <laughs> I have all of it with Gabby. And so um, it's definitely a lot more responsibility, a lot more time consuming, but so much fun. And it's exciting because Gabby and I get to implement some new um, ideas, try to just, you know, freshen it up, give it a little more life into it, you know? You, you, things need to constantly change, which is why we're the new hosts. And, um, and so, yeah, we're really looking forward to bringing some new things to the table and um, we would love for there to be new people participating because it is a lot of work if no one enjoys it. So, um, I do have a lot, like, you know, I'm not working right now, but there are a lot of things that are taking a lot of time. My, um, my Stitchy Quest group, creating the quests, posting them every week, you know, it all takes time. And so... Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm doing with a lot of my time these days. I am going to try to be making some uh, knitting bags, probably putting them on the Etsy shop um, just to try to, you know, be able to <laughs> pay off some bills, student loans, things like that without having to always ask my husband to help. So, um I am hoping to be able to work again soon. That would be awesome if COVID would, you know, a vaccine would come or something. The libraries could open up because, you know, I wanted to start working in a library. Libraries in California are completely closed, or at least they are in our area. And so, um, just kind of stuck in limbo. I'm also in the high risk category because I have asthma and I have diabetes. And so that's like a double whammy. And my husband's high risk. And so um, we're not really in a place where it would be super safe for me to get a job where I'm around people a lot. Like, you know, um, like in a restaurant or something like that. So right now we're in a kind of holding pattern and I'm, I am fortunate that we can afford for me to not be working right now, but it would be nice to not have to depend upon my husband so much. So, um, so yeah, so that's just the life updates. Um, yeah, I don't, oh yeah, I had one more thing I wanted to say. Okay, if anyone's looking for, um, a knitting channel to watch, I have recently discovered the Bakery Bears, and I am obsessed. It is this husband and wife in England, and they both knit, and they are just so funny together. The way that they, I mean, it feels like you're just over there visiting their house, and they're just telling you stories, and they interrupt each other, and they have interesting segments in it, like, um, they live by the Yorkshire Glen, no, Dale. And so he takes you on walks in the Yorkshire Dales. And she was doing a, um, well, she was doing a My Favorite Colorways. She used to dye some yarn. So she would show you how to dye yarn in different ways, how to get speckles, how to do this, how to do that. Um, and that was really interesting. She also had a... A dessert one where she was um, baking different desserts and then seeing which one would be the winner for that season and um, they post every other week and they are amazing I have now gone back 
to their first videos like six or seven years ago and um, they are just the best so if you need to pick me up and if you you're interested at all in knitting type of videos I 100% recommend the bakery bears and I will include their link below and yeah that's all I have to say so thank you for sitting here with me how long was this an hour <laughs> And, um, sorry, my timer is over by where this white box is, so I couldn't actually see the time. So, thank you for sitting here and w catching up with me and listening to my rambles. And I will talk to you guys again, hopefully next week. Bye.